Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear leaders of our religious institutions, community leaders, and MUIS stakeholders, this year we are organizing the MUIS Work Plan Seminar online. The theme is Building a Resilient Community of Success Together. It's apt that I speak to you on the first day of Ramadan, a month full of blessings. It's a month when we are specially challenged. COVID-19 has tested our community and required us to adjust in many ways. And especially so with the extension of the circuit breaker period to 1st June. This year, we'll not be able to pray at our mosque during Ramadan. Kam Hai Raya will not be able to physically gather for Hai Raya prayers nor go about our visiting as usual. These are difficult adjustments, especially for the seniors in our community. Yet I believe this period will bring out the best in us. When we look back after this is over, we will see that we are a resilient community of success. Allow me to touch on two areas of Mui's work in the coming year. First, building the resilience of our Muslim community. Second, Mui's effort to secure the future of the community beyond the COVID-19 crisis. Let me first begin with Mui's response to the COVID-19 situation together with our religious community. Since the outset, Mui's together with our religious leadership decisively sought practical solutions to pressing community needs. Almost immediately, the Office of the Mufti and Fatwa Community Committee issued irshads or religious guidance and fatwas, religious rulings, to guide the community on how it can confidently continue practicing Islam in these times, adjusting as situation demands. We should be proud of our religious leaders because they took these decisive steps proactively and therefore earlier than many other countries. Now, many have done the same. Our most leaders in response quickly implemented contingency plans when the difficult decision was made to close our mosque. Our madrasa leaders successfully led the implementation of home-based learning at very short notice. Our NEPCADIS also work closely with the Registry of Muslim Marriages to put in place precautionary measures for solemnizations such as safe distancing and limiting the number of guests involved. When elevated safe distancing was implemented with circuit breaker measures, the Registry of Muslim Marriages and the Sharia Court postponed solemnizations and court hearings. These are difficult but necessary moves. They came decisively in response to what we need to prevent community spread. I thank our community and religious leaders for rallying behind MUIS and working together with fellow Singaporeans against COVID-19. As importantly, I'm glad to see the mutual support between MUIS and important partners like yourselves adapt to the situation. Immediately too, resources were mobilized to bring religious programs and lectures online when our mosque remained closed. Muiz rent up online religious content through muizmuslim.sg, collaborated with a ground up initiative, kulia.sg, and has introduced a dedicated YouTube channel, Salam SG for Ramadan. We hope these efforts will enable you to continue your religious practices in Ramadan and beyond with some adjustments despite the COVID-19 situation. Many Asatizas have begun to take the opportunity to upskill themselves. We explored dispensing religious guidance to our community via online channels. Masjid Ashafa is one example where most religious leaders launch the podcast series, For Heaven's Sake. Another example is Masjid Abdul Ghafur's Ustaz Abdul Qadir Hisop, who's now reaching out to more jama'ah 
through his online kuliah or class and classes. Well done. We're also grateful that Tata Consultancy Services has donated laptops and broadband connections to madrasa students from less privileged families. These acts of generosity are truly what the spirit of SG United is about. Earlier this month, I convened this SG Tego Bersatu Task Force or Resilience in Unity to strengthen the last mile service delivery of COVID-19 support measures to the Malay Muslim community. Let me share some updates. MUIS has worked with NTUC and MSF to help Asatiza benefit from assistance schemes such as the Self-Employed Person Income Relief Scheme or SERS, Jobs Support Scheme, Temporary Relief Fund or TRF, and COVID-19 Support Grant. Some Asatiza have applied for these schemes and I encourage more to do so. Pragas is helping to validate their work status. We'll also do more for lower income families. MUIS will grant an automatic six month extension to all Zakat financial assistance beneficiaries, whose assistance will be expiring within the next six months. They will not need to reapply for assistance. MUIS will also exercise greater flexibility in assessing applicants for Zakat financial assistance. MUIS will assess and approve deserving cases based on need and will be prepared to support these families even if they do not meet the typical per capita income criteria. We'll ensure that those are, who are in need will receive the support needed during this difficult period. Even as we deal with the present crisis, we must always build up our capabilities for the future. It's indeed during this time when we are not caught up with our routines that MUIS can intensify its effort in two key areas, strengthening Asatiza developments and our social cohesion. Two months ago, the Committee on Future Asatiza, or COFA, headed by SMS Dr. Maliki Osman, completed its landmark report and outlined important directions to uplift the Asatiza sector and develop the skills and competencies of our Asatiza. This will be a long-term effort that MUIS will partner you on. This effort has taken on a new sense of urgency, given the government's push for workers to leverage the opportunity to upskill during the economic slowdown. This applies as much to the religious sector. For instance, Asatiza familiar with technology have been able to move more quickly their classes online and grow their reach than those who did not. Today, I'm pleased to announce the launch of the Career and Competency Framework, CCF for Asatiza. The CCF was developed over the past year in close consultation with our mosques and madrasas. Individual Asatiza can now refer to the CCF to learn more about the skills needed for their roles, determine skills gap, and identify suitable training programs. They can also find out about other roles in the sector and chart their future career pathways in areas such as religious policy and development, education, mosques, and community developments. The CCF also defines our apex religious leadership positions in our religious institutions. The Mufti, below whom are two deputy Muftis, Dean of the Muiz Academy, Senior President of the Sharia Court and the Registrar for Muslim Marriages. These APEC leaders will work with and support the Mufti in leading our Asatiza in the different areas of expertise. In future, we would like the Mufti to be appointed from office bearers who have acquired skills and experiences after rotating through these five APEC positions. The CCF spells out the articulation path to these positions. MUIS will conduct online workshops and webinars to share with you more about the CCF and how you can implement it in your organizations. With the CCF in place, I'm confident that our returning religious students 
will have an exciting future if they choose to remain in the religious sector. Our current Asatiza will also have more opportunities to broaden their skill sets and contribute more effectively to the community and society. This year, in light of the COVID-19 situation, MUIS has identified two key competencies from the CCF that Asatiza should build up, digital literacy and counseling skills. I urge Asatizas to use their skill future credits to register for relevant courses. Self-employed Asatiza may tap on the Self-Employed Person Training Support Scheme. In total, MUIS will invest $1.5 million this year in initiatives to develop and upskill Asatiza for working full-time in religious institutions, self-employed, and part-timers. Beyond Asatiza development, MUIS will continue to intensify its efforts to strengthen social cohesion, which we value deeply as Singaporeans, and Alhamdulillah, has helped us weather the current crisis. Dear community leaders, I've been very encouraged by the efforts of a community to stand with fellow Singaporeans through the current crisis. This includes our most outreach efforts to appreciate our healthcare and frontline work. Yes. The Rahmatan Lil Alamin Foundation, RLAF, collected donations at mosques for the Courage Fund. Many of the Muslim and Christian communities were inspired by the exchange of letters between Mufti and Bishop Terry Key, the President of National Council of Churches Singapore, over the Easter weekend, symbolizing the solidarity of all faith communities in facing the crisis. We also touch with the story of retired cleaner, Mr. Zulfikli Atnawi, and his four children who made grocery runs for their rental flat neighbors using their own money and donations from friends. The current crisis must not divide us. Indeed, it must bring out the best within our community, more so in Ramadan. In this regard, I applaud the SG United Puka Puasa initiative to bring meals daily to our healthcare heroes and low-income families during the fasting month. This collaboration involves many partners coming together and has garnered support from many Singaporeans, regardless of race or religion. I'm glad to share that due to overwhelming requests for the meals, we have increased the number of meals catered from 15,000 per day to 20,000 meals per day. Correspondingly, RLF will also raise its fundraising target from $2.5 million to $3 million. I appeal to you to support this meaningful cause by donating generously and sharing this with others in your network. These examples reinforce my conviction that our Malay Muslim community is a community of success, or Masyarakat Gemila. Once we overcome COVID-19 together, MUIS will convene the International Conference on Communities of Success, or ICOS, to bring religious, political, and community leaders to work together on how we can develop successful communities. We look forward to this conference, which will not just benefit the Muslim community in Singapore, but also represents our community's contribution to Muslim communities worldwide. Allow me to end my speech by wishing every Muslim a blessed Ramadan. Even though we celebrate Ramadan differently this year, we have the precious opportunity in this blessed month to strengthen familial ties. We can deepen our spirituality through our fasting, prayers at home, and acts of charity. Let us stay strong and demonstrate resilience and unity as we overcome COVID-19 together. Wa billahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.